Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. Start with a divorce and marry Hermione backhanded. Chapter 31. He didn't expect Ronald to talk like that. The talk is endless. Ronald, who was explaining Rumsky's fake to Braun, stopped instantly. Look in the direction Braun is pointing. Quite interested. Let's go check it out, Braun. Braun, of course, would not object. He meant to shut up Ronald. Two people walked towards the crowd. Before I could get closer, I heard exclamations from the crowd. Merlin, the Malfoys are amazing. Yes, get one more medal to get a signed poster from Ness Murray. Quote, Braun didn't know much about these Quidditch teams. Turning his head and asking, Ronald, who is Ness Murray? Ronald first looked with some envy at the medallion in front of the blonde child in the middle of the crowd. He then explained to Braun, Ness Murray is a seeker for the Montrose Magpies. This team is very good. He has won the UEFA Cup with England and Erlen 23 times. Two-time European Cup winner. It's a very strong team. There are their fans all over the world. Ness Murray repeatedly proposed to the Ministry of Magic to increase the speed of the Golden Snitch because he thought it was too easy to catch. Unfortunately, he died in a game in 1942. His posters are still valuable. Some wizards are willing to pay a fortune for his signed posters. Quote. While saying, Ronald's gaze at the poster also became hotter and hotter. Braun, let's join too. Together we can definitely surpass the Malfoy boys. Quote. Braun hesitated. Although I memorized a lot of books during this time, most of them were about potions. Like some young wizards knew about the attempt, he didn't know very well. Because the original body does not have these hobbies. Isn't this the poor ghost of the Weasley family? Still want to surpass me. Ha ha do you have the money to pay the registration fee? The registration fee is three silver zico. I guess you can't get a copper nut. Quote. Malfoy scuffled his waist and laughed loudly. Ronald noticed the need to attend at the moment. The face collapsed at once. Just now, he only had to imagine the beauty of winning the award. I didn't notice that there is also an entry fee to participate in the competition. At the moment, I don't know what to say. After all, Malfoy was right. Don't say it's Yinxico. He hadn't touched much of the copper gnat. The little face couldn't help but turn red. Isn't it just three silver Shiko? I'll hand it over. Quote. Braun said beside Ronald. At this moment, Malfoy turned his head to see which guy with no long eyes was. Seeing Braun, Malfoy laughed. Fully. Ha ha. Sure enough, waste will only be with waste. Braun, do you want to overtake me as a squib? Quote. Braun, not a squib. You little death eater. Quote. Ronald, after realizing that Braun had a lot of money, was not so timid at the moment. Shouted at Malfoy. Seeing the people around him who were talking, Malfoy's face instantly darkened. Although he was influenced by his father to worship Voldemort extremely. But he still knew. I still had to hold my tail between my legs when Voldemort didn't come back. The disgusted gazes of everyone at the moment hurt his self-esteem greatly. Shut up, you two crap, crab, beat them up hard for me. Quote. A tall boy beside Malfoy heard Malfoy's words. Step forward. It startled Braun. It's a little too high for crab. Obviously everyone is nine years old, so why can you have a height close to one meter five? He knew that neither he nor Ronald were crab's opponents. The wisest option at the moment is to escape. However, if he really runs away, he will definitely be ridiculed by the children of various families in the future. So he pretended to be calm. Malfoy, what kind of skill is fighting? Do you have the ability to make a bet with me? Quote. Malfoy felt a little interested. Want to hear what Braun has to say? Wave at Crab. Say, what do you want to bet? We, let's bet on who answers the questions more. Ronald replied wittily. After speaking, he looked at Braun. A look of quick praise on my face. Braun was speechless. Originally, he wanted to use other bets. For example, potions that you are good at. But Ronald snapped it up. It blocked his way in an instant. I can't regret it. He could only look at Ronald viciously. And Ronald took it as, well done. A triumphant look. Mars thought for a moment and then looked at the two people across from him. A poor ghost and a squib. Blocked, nodding and saying. No problem, but what are you betting on? Does Kim Garon dare? 100 gold gallons, what do you think? Quote, 
he felt like he was compared to the two waists opposite. Let's say it is stronger. Won't this hundred gold galleons be within easy reach at that time? As for saying that there is no money, the poor ghosts of the Weasley family may not have the money. But isn't there a foley? The Foleys, as a family of Potionsians, are very rich. Money is definitely indispensable. Hee <laughs> hee, dad will definitely praise me then. Malfoy thought to himself, seeing that the two did not speak. Malfoy continued, how, can't the young master of the Foley family even take out a hundred galleons? If you can't get it, forget it. Quote, having said that, how could Braun refuse that? Okay, we bet. Braun and Malfoy shook hands. It is considered to agree to the bet between each other. It's a big deal to lose Garon, who has just gotten his hands and hasn't covered the heat. It's better than cowardice. Braun handed over six silver Seco. The two began to line up. But because of the bet with Malfoy just now. Let the other wizards who are lining up make way for these two teenagers. After all, the life of wizards is too boring. They also happen to want to see this bet from the descendants of three pure blood families. Braun and Ronald quickly became empty in front of them. Braun, will you? I won't be miserable at this time. Quote. Ronald held his head in pain. I feel sad both for the entry fee of the three silver Shiko and for the imminent loss of a hundred gold galleons. He had never touched so much money. Compared to Ronald's pain. Braun was full of confidence at the moment. These topics are less like wizard common sense and more like some brain teasers. In his previous life, he had no friends. Often hold a book like this and read it. Winning these topics can be said to be more than enough. At least a draw with Malfoy. The reason why young wizards like Ronald are not entirely because they have no knowledge of muggles. Otherwise, if you change to a muggle-born wizard, you will definitely be able to answer a lot. Don't worry, look at me, quote, Braun reassured Ronald. Do you see you're ugly? Malfoy laughed presumptuously. Braun ignored him. Sometimes, facts are more useful than lip service. Ready, a clerk at a Quidditch boutique. Smiled. Braun nodded. The clerk waved his wand. Only before the meeting appeared on this huge parchment. An auror with three prisoners wanted to cross the river. The three prisoners are a garlic-loving muggle, a dark wizard, and a vampire. But his flying broom is too small to carry one person. How do I bring everyone there? Quote, Merlin's beard. I've never seen a dark wizard or a vampire. Quote, Ronald shouted desperately when he saw the title. It has nothing to do with whether you've seen vampires and dark wizards or not. Braun was a little helpless. How did I meet such a pig teammate? However, there is not much difficulty in this question. Isn't this other world's wolf sheep cabbage? It's just that the wolf has become a vampire. The sheep became dark wizards. Cabbage became a muggle that loved garlic. There was no hesitation. Braun replied directly. Take the wizard over first. Then bring the garlic-loving muggles over. Bring the dark wizard over again. Bring the vampire over again. Then return to the other side to bring the dark wizard over. So all three were carried across the river. Quote, oh my god, it's amazing. I'm still thinking about that. It has already been answered. Quote, did he read the answer beforehand? How else could it have been answered so quickly? Quote, Malfoy is not as fast as him. Quote dot 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 quote. Bronze answering speed. It shocked the wizards around him. You know, even Malfoy just now thought about every question for a long time when answering the question. There's someone like Braun who just asked questions. This side will follow the answer that comes out. Very good. Answer correctly. Quote, the clerk approvingly handed over a badge with a broom on it. Do you want to start the next question? But I have to remind you. The next questions can only be answered by one person. Who are you going to let come? Quote, looking at Ronald couldn't help but take a few steps back. Braun knew he couldn't count on him. I'll do it. Okay, next it's time to blindfold. The clerk said while blindfolding Braun. There are two pairs of black socks and two pairs of white socks in front of you, eight socks of the exact same fabric and size, and each pair of socks is connected to a piece of trademark paper. But accidentally mix these eight pairs of socks together. How can I separate two pairs of black socks and two pairs of white socks? Quote. Oh my God. It's so hard. Quote. Yes. There is no way to divide it. Quote. Unless you use the flying curse. If you want me to use divination. 
Quote dot 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 quote. Braun ignored the crowd's comments. Pick up the socks on the table. Walk to the fire. What is he trying to do? How did you take the socks away? Quote. I don't know, maybe it's self-defeating. Prepare to burn your socks. Quote. I think it might be the same. Ronald was also muttering in his heart at the moment, not knowing what Braun was trying to do. Malfoy is not to mention. At the moment, he looked at Braun with a look of victory. Just waiting to collect their own galleons. Braun has no audience for people. Still standing by the fire on his own. Wait until everyone is impatient to wait. Said lightly. Okay. Then not wait for Malfoy and the others to say anything. He quickly separated the black and white socks into two piles. What's going on? Merlin, just bake it. Is this the new divination? Quote. But there are also some smart people who retort. What do you think about that? Divination requires crystal balls and tea dregs, and he can't see it, and he must be divining from time to time. I think there must be some method that we don't know. Quote. The clerk was also a little surprised. It's amazing. How is it done? Quote. Braun took off his blindfold and didn't sell it. Instead, he directly handed over two socks, one black and one white. The clerk was a little confused. However, after receiving the socks, it was a little sudden. The temperature is different. Braun nodded. At the same temperature, black is more likely to absorb heat than white. No wonder you roast it in front of the fire. Very fantastic idea. Are you a muggle-born wizard? Or a half-blood wizard? No, no, your surname is Foley, but I always feel that your approach is somewhat similar to that of Muggle. Well, science. This question has stumped several Ravenclaw-born wizards. Let's be honest compared to this kind of problem. They are more accustomed to answering philosophical questions. And not good at solving this Muggle problem. Quote, Braun's face does not change color. Our family is a family of potions. As potions masters, we need to master the properties of various materials in order to better keep pace with the times. This is what I know after studying a few muggle books. Quote. The clerk applauded him. Everyone around also looked at Braun with admiration. It's amazing. If I had done the same when I studied potions, maybe I would have been a potions master by now. Don't think about it. Just rely on your memory that you can treat aconitum and wolf poison aconitum as two things. You don't want to be a potions master in your life. Quote. Next, Braun solves the difficult question of a wizard or a British man. Although he only went to high school in his previous life. But his bloodline as a small town quiz still allows him to easily answer these questions. Of course, Malfoy is not bad. At this moment, the score of the two has been equalized. All five badges. Give, prizes for the two of you. The clerk handed two signed posters of Nice Mori to the two. On the poster, Ness Mori is flying around the Quidditch arena on a broom with a golden snitch in his hand. The mouth is even more shouting slogans. Braun wasn't surprised by the moving poster. It's been more than a month since he came here. Just looking at the moving portraits in the Magic Daily newspaper has long been accustomed. Although he did not have similar technology in his previous life. But there are many ways to store images. Hand the poster to Ronald. To you Ronald. Oh, Braun, do you know how precious this poster is? At least dozens of galleons can be sold. Quote. Ronald's ears flushed with excitement. A good tutor makes him instinctively feel that he should not accept this kind of reward for not contributing nothing. But I can't help but like it in my heart. Braun, don't worry, I won't sell it. I mean I'll keep it well. Stick it to my bedhead. So I can see him every day when I open my eyes. Quote. Ronald said incoherently. Then happily roll up the poster and stick it in front of you. That cautious look. People who don't know still think that they are holding precious porcelain. Malfoy hated it. What I thought was a victory would happen to me. This made him a little unhappy. Crab. Here you go. Quote. Looking at Crab. Malfoy gave the poster to his follower in pain. Crab who got the poster, was very happy. It is not okay to look left and right to rejoice. Thank you so much, Malfoy, quote, Crab said in a rough voice. If you like it, Malfoy pulled out a smile. In fact, he also likes this poster very much. It's like the poor ghost of the Weasley family said. Even if you don't want it, you can sell dozens of galleons. 
But who asked Braun to give altitude to his henchman Ronald? Well, he subconsciously thought that Ronald was Braun's follower. He thinks he is much more powerful than Braun, so how can he bear a small poster? If you don't give it, won't you mean that you are worse than the little devil of the Foley family? This was unacceptable to Malfoy. Okay too. Now are you ready for the next game? Quote. The clerk stood in front of the two contestants and asked kindly. Then the game is officially started. Of course. The two replied without hesitation. Well, let me explain the rules of the next game. The next two can pull a ball from this bucket, and the ball will have the type of question you want to answer written on it. Whoever answers the 10 questions first in the same time wins, and if they are not answered, then the victory is determined by who answers more. Of course, to make the game fairer, you can also choose a genre that you are good at. That case, however, you'll need to answer five more questions than the other contestant at the same time. Quote, this rule seems to have only one option. Anyone with a discerning eye can see it. One is 10 randomly selected questions. The other is 15 questions of your choice. Or the same time, definitely the first option is more dominant. However, Braun will choose the second one. If the original was an ordinary pure blood child, Braun will certainly not hesitate to choose the first one. But, he is not normal, because there has been no magic riot. Coupled with eavesdropping on parents' conversations from time to time, the original body became very sensitive and fragile, plus the dog's memory was inferior. Basically, in memory, in addition to playing, playing or reading. There is simply not much common sense that a young wizard should have. If it weren't for Bronze Crossing, this body would have been sent to the muggle world to live with his squib uncle. How, have you thought about it? Quote, the clerk reminded the two little wizards who were pondering. I choose the first one. Malfoy didn't hesitate to name the choice most people would make. Braun glanced at the type of title on the parchment and said lightly. I'll choose the second one. Braun, choose the first one. Quote. Ronald on the side pulled Braun's sleeve a little anxiously. You said something wrong. If you say it wrong, I agree with you to say it again. Quote. The clerk kindly reminded. It's the first time I've heard that I can regret it. Malfoy scoffed from the sidelines. Ronald said anxiously. Braun, don't be mad at Malfoy's words. Braun glanced at Malfoy with his neck and nostrils in the air. Not changed. Let's go. Quote. The clerk sighed. Originally, he wanted to see if Braun could win, but now it seems hopeless. Braun is just a kid who doesn't even go to school. How good can you be even if you are good at it? Answer 10 questions one by one at the same time. Who wins between the two? The result is obvious. Well, you can choose the type of question you want to answer first. Herbalism, Braun said, pointing to the parchment. No one was surprised. Does Foley choose spells if he doesn't choose potions? Okay, the clerk nodded. Then he signaled that Malfoy could draw questions. Malfoy reached into the box and pulled out a ball. I saw that after the ball left the box, a line of words quickly appeared on it, Herbology. Malfoy was a little surprised but not scared although potions is not the type he is good at. But he had also read the book in advance. Not to mention that he also has a potions master, Snape, as his godfather. General problems really don't bother him. Think of it this way. Malfoy secretly said, I only need to answer 10 questions. Braun, on the other hand, had 15 questions to answer. Even if he knew more than me, he couldn't be faster than me. Well, the advantage is in me. Quote, it's fun. Unexpectedly, the two little wizards turned out to be the same topic. Maybe we should change the way. How about a preemptive answer? Is that more interesting? Quote, yes, I'm okay. Braun also shrugged in agreement. It's okay to see the contestants. The clerk waved his wand excitedly. Okay, let's start now. Get ready. No need to signal. Answer directly after seeing the question. Quote, after that, the title appeared on the huge parchment. White Fresh. The title just appeared. Braun replied directly. White Fresh is a plant with healing and repair like magical properties. Raw food can heal superficial wounds, and the effect of extracting into fragrance is even more outstanding. Chopped White Fresh is the material used to make the invigorating potion. Wizards have also used a mixture of White Fresh and Silver Powder to treat werewolf bites to prevent victims from dying of excessive blood loss. Quote. Perfect answer. Exactly. Quote, 
Malfoy was a little hateful. I just exported late. It was preempted by Braun. And he found that maybe he wasn't very advantageous in answering the questions that way. Wait a minute. I think you should answer the questions faster than anyone at the same time. Otherwise, what is the advantage between my 10 questions and his 15 questions? Quote. After speaking, he poked and kicked Crab. Crab was taken aback, but understood what Malfoy meant. That's right. It's not fair. Malfoy is right. Quote. The clerk also hesitated, turned to Braun to see what he thought. I don't care, Braun replied. But, Malfoy, if you want to answer the question a different way, this question must be counted. Quote. Malfoy hesitated and nodded. Yes, this question is even if Master Malfoy pities you. Quote. Braun ignored Malfoy's stinky fart, waiting for him to cry his nose. Then I'm okay. Well, okay. While saying, with another wave of his wand, another piece of parchment appeared in front of Malfoy. Can it be now? Let's go, Malfoy said with satisfaction. Malfoy's side is, castor oil. And Braun's side is, solitary grass. No surprises, both of them answered quickly. Malfoy was quick to answer at first. But by the time of the sixth question, he began to stumble a little. When it comes to the seventh question, I become more and more hesitant. Braun, on the other hand, has been keeping a fast pace. Basically just finished asking questions on parchment. And then, Braun answered. The Dharma protector tree is a magical Yamanashi tree. Scurvy scurvy is a kind of herb in the magical world, easy to, cause encephalitis, causing impatience and recklessness, mostly used to make psychedelic drugs and deceptions. The sleepy bean is a shriveled, pearly white bean, the fruit of the sleepy grass. However, this property is not reflected in potions making. Sleepy beans can be used to make a living hell decoction. Quote. It's amazing. Basically answered without hesitation. Quote. Worthy of the Foley family. That is, it's a little worse than when I was younger. Quote. Who are you? Talking big and not afraid to flash your waist. Quote. I'm his dad. My name is Albert Foley. Quote. As soon as these words came out, the wizard who was originally sarcastic did not dare to say anything. One is because he can't afford to mess with it, and the other is because he is lousy, the little wizard who competed. Even if you don't accept it, you can't say it. Looking at Braun, who looked calm in the field, Foley's eyes couldn't help but show approval. Worthy of being your own cub. It's just powerful, better than him and me. Well, or I'm the best. He would have come over a long time ago. It's not just him, Arthur S. Weasley followed. The wizarding world is not very calm. There are also many people who abduct little wizards. How could the two of them be relieved that they ran out there alone? It's just that he didn't make a sound, just looked at the two silently. He didn't show up until after Braun and Malfoy had a match. But they didn't stop it, apparently wanting to see how their son behaved. Representative Foley is pleased with Braun's performance. However, Mr. Weasley was not very happy with Ronald's performance. Basically watching Braun answer questions. I was stunned there. He plans to train Ronald when he gets home. In the past, he didn't know it. But now in front of the children of his brother-in-law's family, such a comparison. The gap became apparent at once. Arthur S. Weasley thought to himself. Obviously, Bill Charlie and they are so good children, although George and the others do not let us worry but their results are also good. How did it get to Ronald like this? No way. I'm going back to train him well. Today is such a shame. Quote. Ronald who was excited to watch Braun keep answering questions, couldn't help but shiver at the moment. I turned my head and looked at it and found nothing unusual. But he always had a feeling that something bad was going to happen to him. Braun looked at the last question that appeared on the parchment in front of him. He turned to look at Malfoy, who was still there hesitating and not knowing how to answer. I took a deep breath and pursed my somewhat dry lips. Mandrake. Braun glanced at the title, then at Malfoy, who was still there thinking, and quipped. Malfoy, I'm done answering, I hope you don't cry later. Malfoy's face turned red from Braun's anger. Turning his head to look at Braun's title, he said triumphantly. Walk and see, do you know what mandrakes are? Malfoy said dismissively. He also accidentally flipped through his senior textbook to discover this plant. Malfoy felt that Braun, 
even if he was good, was just a preview of first-year knowledge. He would definitely not know about this kind of second and third grade stuff. And he still has a back hand. Gave Crab a wink. Malfoy said secretly. Come on, Malfoy, you're the last question too. There is still a chance. Quote, after seeing your own topic. Malfoy replied quickly. Braun looked at him meaningfully and did not dare to delay any longer. Mandrake is a magical plant, it. The words are not finished. I saw the big man from Crab rushing over. Apparently Malfoy had sent him to buy time. Braun just tried to dodge. I saw Ronald rush over. However, the difference in body size between the two is indeed a little big. It's just a face. Ronald was crushed by Crab. But even so, he still held Crab. By time for Braun. Although Braun is a little anxious, he also knows that the most important thing at hand is to answer the question quickly, otherwise Ronald's efforts will only be worthless. Its rhizome looks like an ugly human baby and has extremely high medicinal properties. Its rhizomes cut down can be used to make mandrakes resurrection potions. Mandrakes are an important part of most antidotes. Earmuffs need to be worn before pulling the mandrake out, as hearing the screams of adult mandrakes is fatal. The screams of immature mandrakes can also make people unconscious. If the mandrake begins to be moody and reticent, it means that it has begun to mature, and when the acne on the mandrake is healed, it can be ready for transplantation and harvesting. The result is made into a potion. Finally, by the way, the mandrake resurrection potion made from mandrake can heal petrification caused by the basilisk's gaze. Quote. As Braun's last word fell, the title on the parchment disappeared. Small fireworks began to be set off on both sides of the parchment as if to make clear Braun's victory. Finally, he finished the question a few tens of seconds ahead of Malfoy. Braun, you did it. You've defeated Malfoy. Quote. Ronald ran over to hug Braun excitedly against the tail fingers of the rat beaten by Crab. It made Braun a little embarrassed. Especially thinking about the traditions of the rotten country makes me feel even tighter. Ahem, Ronald, what's going on with your eyes? Braun said and pushed Ronald away holding his hand. Nothing, I was careless just now and didn't flash. Braun you are really amazing. Quote. Malfoy's face on the side was gloomy. Humph. It's just your luck this time, Braun. Next time, next time I won't let you go. Quote. After saying that, he turned around and was about to leave. But he was stopped by Ronald. Malfoy, you don't want to be on the bill, do you? Quote. Malfoy had this in mind. But when Ronald said this, he snorted coldly. Bad account, you don't know anything about wealth, poor ghosts of the Weasley family. It's just a hundred gold galleons, which is nothing to me. Quote. Saying that, he took out a small money bag and threw it on the ground. Without looking back, he walked away with Crab. He was afraid that if he walked a little slower, he would not be able to help crying out in distress. A hundred galleons, three months of pocket money. It's gone, it's gone, Ronald doesn't dislike it. Crouched down and took the money bag that Malfoy had thrown away. As soon as I opened it, I was almost blinded by the dazzling golden light. He swallowed his saliva and handed it to Braun. Here you go, Braun. Braun took the money, thought about it, took ten galleons out of the money bag and handed them to Ronald. No, Braun, I can't ask for it. Ronald refused. Forget about the poster. It's worth a lot, but it's not money after all. Although he deserves it, he can still deceive himself into accepting it. But now Braun is giving himself money. Or Kingdalen. Braun solemnly shoved the gold gallons into Ronald's hands. Take it, Ronald. You deserve it. If you hadn't stopped Crab for me. I won't beat Malfoy so smoothly. Quote. Hearing this, Ronald finally accepted the gold gallon that Braun had shoehorned into his hand. At this moment, he can't wait to get beaten again. Looking at the glittering golden light of Jingolin, Ronald has never been happier than he is today. This was the first time he had touched Galleon. It's no exaggeration. They could have more galleons than they had in the Weasleys, coffers. Please wait a minute. The clerk stopped the two who wanted to leave. What's wrong? Braun wondered. You forgot to take the prize. The clerk reminded. Prizes, isn't it for me? Quote. He said and motioned for Ronald to show the clerk the poster in his hand. It is the prize of the second stage of the challenge. A limited edition flying broom. Quote. Saying that, 
the clerk motioned for his two colleagues to carry the broom over. I saw a fiery broom appear in front of Braun. This was the first time he had seen such a beautiful broom. The entire broom is engraved with various lines and patterns. The handle is covered with goblin metal. It is carved with a red fire dragon roaring with its mouth open. The spell applied on it both prevents slip and keeps the temperature of the handle warm. Prevent the fingers of the owner of the broom from freezing in bad weather. The tail plate of the broom has a perfect arc. It looks like it's comfortable to ride on this broomstick. The tail branch of the broom is polished very smoothly. Like a beautiful work of art. This broom is a conceptual product of Firebolt. It was intended to be supplied to the English Quidditch team. But it was abandoned because of the high cost of production. But even so, it's the fastest and most powerful broom in wizarding today. Quote. The clerk explained to Braun. As if to see Braun's indifference, Ronald, a diehard Quidditch loyalist, added. Braun, Firebolt Corporation is a newly formed broom company. Although it is a new company, their brooms are very sought after. Everyone is a masterpiece. It's just that because it's all handmade, the yield is very low. This concept product is even more powerful than their Firebolt. Braun you can let me ride. Let me touch it. Quote, see Ronald's cautious look. Braun didn't refuse. It's just a beautiful broom. He wasn't a Quidditch fan. For him, the broom is just a tool. Throw it to Ronald. Frightened, he hurriedly caught it. Braun, you're so careless. Although he knew that high-level brooms were all cast a floating charm capable of hovering in the air. But he still blamed a few words. While blaming Braun, Ronald is like touching her lover's body. Caress this broom. Ah, one ah word was uttered four tones by Ronald. Can you please stop making such weird noises? Braun looked at the lewd-looking Ronald in front of him and said a little speechlessly. Know that you are touching a broomstick. I don't know what you're doing. Ronald ignored Braun's words. Instead, he spoke incoherently with excitement. Braun your baby is so beautiful. Check this out. Oh my god. What a good baby. Quote. Braun looked into his fiery eyes. Subconsciously took two steps back. It's really that Ronald's words are too easy to cause others to misunderstand. Here again is the country of corruption. Hello, my father is drinking at the Leaky Cauldron Bar. Can you go and call him? It was a little unsafe for our two children to hold these things. Quote. Saying that, he glanced at the onlookers worriedly. He still knows what the end of the two children holding gold through the busy market. He has 200 gold galleons on his body, and such a valuable broom. He and Ronald went straight back to the bar if they dared to swagger. Maybe you'll have to be robbed halfway. He didn't want to test the humanity of wizards. Because human nature cannot stand the test, let alone these ancestors or pirate Yinguo. Of course, the clerk also admired this knowledgeable little wizard. A few words to one of the clerks who had just carried a broom. The somewhat skinny clerk hurried to the leaky cauldron bar. No need to look for it. We are here. Quote, Albert Foley and Arthur M. Weasley ideographic period walked through the crowd. Dad, Braun breathed a sigh of relief when he saw Mr. Foley. Ronald, return the broom to Cousin Foley. It's not too early for your mother to be anxious, we should go back. Quote. Watching his son stroke the broom like a prostitute addicted to a coquettish body, he also exclaimed from time to time. Arthur S. Weasley couldn't help but blacken his face. Several of his children are still able to make a living. Even the youngest daughter is still young but her wit can still be seen. Only this little son. What not to do? Eat first place. Look at this bear again at the moment. If it weren't for that red hair. Tell Arthur that the goods are indeed his own. He even felt that he had accidentally held the wrong one at St. Mungo's Hospital. Ronald reluctantly handed the broom to Braun. However, after thinking of the poster I got and the ten gold gallons, my mood instantly became happy. Braun eats meat and drinks soup himself. It was perfect. Alas, Braun is just his own cousin. If only it were his own brother. At least not like Fred did. Quote, Ronald couldn't help but think in his heart. But then I didn't know what I thought of and couldn't help but light up my eyes. It's amazing. My baby. Quote, Mr. Foley said happily. He didn't care much about money and brooms. After all, this is all small meaning to him. What he cares about is Braun's proficiency in that knowledge. With that attitude of not being alarmed. These things are the most important things in his opinion. 
Ronald, when will you be like your fully cousin? Arthur S. Weasley first looked at his brother-in-law with envy. Then he reprimanded Ronald. In the past, he and his brother-in-law showed off their children. Unexpectedly, today I was shown a face by my ordinary nephew in the past. In particular, there is also the premise of his own son on the scene to make a comparison. Okay, okay, let's go. Millie and they were also anxious. Quote, Mr. Foley hurriedly rounded the field. Jean Arthur S. What Weasley wanted to say to Ronald came back to his mouth. He just glared at Ronald with his eyes. Why did you come back so late? Molly said to her youngest son with some complaint. Oh my God, Ronald what's wrong with your eyes? Quote. Ronald waved at his mother nonchalantly. Then excitedly began to tell Bron's great achievements today. Mom, you don't see it. How awesome Bron is. Those questions were all answered. Quote. Molly listened to Ronald's upside-down narrative. Covered his mouth in surprise. Millie also looked at her son in shock. Although she heard her husband say how amazing Bron's talent was, she never paid much attention. In her opinion, as long as her son is not a squib. It is enough for your own family to live together in peace. What else circulates in the wizarding world, revitalizes the Foley family. In her opinion, it is far less important than the happiness of her family. Who would have thought that his once shy and timid son could bring such a big surprise to himself? Millie, now you can rest assured Braun. Quote, Millie Foley said to her sister with a modest look. Where is there any peace of mind, it is enough not to cause me trouble if you are not at ease. The two sisters exchanged a few more pleasantries. Only then did they say goodbye to each other and prepare to leave. Braun, see you next time. If you have time, remember to come to my house to play. We can catch goblins and stingers together. Quote, Ronald reluctantly invited his cousin to his home. Okay, I will. Braun also said to Ronald very solemnly. To be honest, he is indeed somewhat interested in the burrow in the movie. Especially the strange building that resembles Hal's mobile castle. Own home castle though said beautiful. But there is no fantasy from Ronald's house. There are also goblins and thorns that my family has never seen before. It also intrigues him. Watch as the Weasleys use flow powder to leave. The Foley family also said goodbye to old Tom. Came to his own carriage. Got into the carriage. Mr. Foley finally couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha, Braun, you didn't see your Uncle Arthur's face. It's so exciting. Quote. Albert, what are you telling the child about this? Mrs. Foley patted her husband's arm dissatisfiedly. Mr. Foley hummed. You can't blame me. Arthur hasn't shown off his children to me before, hasn't he? Millie Foley gave her husband a blank look, a little helpless at his childish behavior. But there is one thing to say. The amazement her sister looked at her son did give her vanity great satisfaction. Mom, the money is for you. This is the hundred galleons I won from Malfoy. Quote. Braun handed over the money he had received from Malfoy. Malfoy, Narcissus' child. Awesome, my son. Quote. Millie joyfully accepted the money Braun handed over. A kiss on Braun's head. It made Braun blush. How is it 90 galleons? Narcissus' children are less for you. Quote. Millie counted the money and frowned. Those 10 gold gallons were given to Ronald by your son. Mr. Foley sits at the table drinking black tea. Mom bought me time thanks to Ronald. Braun explains. Just now, when Ronald told the story, he automatically hid the fact that he got the money. So it's normal for Mrs. Foley not to know. Ronald. Millie's eyes darkened a little. Ronald was always a little shy. Molly and I always looked worried about Ronald when we chatted. Quote. Your sister's family is really not doing well, how many times have I said it? But it didn't work at all. Quote. You still don't know my sister's nature. Tough does not accept softness. Let's help her, she will always feel overwhelmed but these 10 gold gallons should give them a good Christmas. Quote. Mom, those 10 galleon things. Nobody knows, does it? Silly boy, I know where the money is, don't you Uncle Arthur know? Ronald's money will definitely not be saved. Quote. Mr. Foley gloated. As Mr. Foley expected, Ronald's money didn't keep it. As soon as he arrived home, he was shocked by Arthur S. Weasley reported. Then Ronald was asked for money by her own mother. It was replaced with a grilled meat with one serving per person. However, Arthur S. 
Weasley seemed to feel that he was doing something unorthodox. So Ronald was given three more silver as compensation. Originally, Ronald wanted to be hardened. But, in the end, he still couldn't resist the temptation of Yin Zico. Happy received the money in his pocket. Grab more snacks on the train when you're ready to start school. Eat a big meal. After dinner, Ronald told his brothers about Bronze Battle of Malfoy. The content is called a thrilling ups and downs. Similarly, as a supporting role, he was also beaten to a dead dog by Crab. It turned into a 300-round battle with Crab. The heroic image of the reluctant defeat in the end. Arthur S. Weasley laughed, as if seeing through everything. That's it. Braun beat Malfoy when I managed to hold on to Crab. Not only won a hundred gold galleons, but also a limited edition firebolt. I told you that broom was so. It's just that at this moment, everyone who listened to the story has no heart to listen to Ronald talk about Quidditch anymore. Ginny adored the word. Cousin Foley is amazing. I thought Braun would be a squib. Fred shrugged. Fred, don't say that. Quote, okay, mom, but I'm George. Quote, hey, I am George. Don't splash dirty water on me. Quote, George on the side is admiring a poster of Ronald. At this moment, hearing the words of his twin brother, he slapped him with some dissatisfaction. Ronald, how about giving me this poster? The gold galleon sold as one and a half of us. Quote, George egged on his brother. Ronald was a little moved. But in the end, he shook his head into a rattle. Nope, I don't sell. I promised Bron that I would put the poster on my bedside. Quote, well, that's a shame. George saw that he could not fool his brother and had to hand over the poster angrily. As for taking it and selling it secretly, although they like to bully their little brother. But not to that point yet. What is it? Percy, who had been looking down at the book, also raised his head. Ronald said with some ostentation. This is a poster Braun gave me. Above is a signed poster of Ness Murray, a seeker for the Montrose Magpies. Quote, Percy's eyes flickered as he looked at the poster. In my heart, I was thinking about how to get along with Braun. Compare this to the other brothers of the Weasley family. He is more utilitarian, like Ronald. He also has a feeling of inferiority to his native family. It's just that compared to Ronald's self-defeat, he turned this inferiority complex into motivation to climb up. This is also the reason why he can later become Fudge's magical assistant and can still follow the next Minister of Magic after Fudge's fall. Ding dong, ding dong, quote, the magic clock on the wall rang non-stop, and the hands pointed to the sleeping position. All right kids, stop it, it's late today and everyone needs to go to rest, quote, Molly S. Weasley washed everyone's tableware, he said to the crowd. Ronald had wanted to talk about posters. But hearing Mrs. Weasley's words, she still obediently jumped off the couch. Get ready to go to bed. He was more afraid of his mother than his father. Mom, I still want to read a book. Ginny coquettishly after washing. The couple is still very fond of their little daughter. Okay, but just watch for a while or you won't be able to get up again tomorrow. We still have to decorate the house. Quote, okay. Ginny tilted her head and said sweetly. Mrs. Weasley ordered a magic light for her by the fireplace etc. Ginny was able to sit in a rocking chair by the fireplace and read a book in peace. Inside the bedroom. Oh, Shet, Percy put your rat away. He almost bit me just now. Quote, Fred, who had just gotten into bed, felt something in his pants. I was taken aback when I took it out. Percy, who was lying on the other side, did not move. Scabbers don't bite and Fred you should give Ronald, now he's Ronald's. Ronald though was a little dissatisfied with using his brother's old stuff for everything. But it's actually very happy to have a pet of your own. Ronald, you're rat, quote, Fred threw Scabber onto Ronald's bed. Hey, don't be like Fred, he's going to get hurt when he's too old. Ronald picked up the scaffolds and said to Fred, don't worry, he doesn't look old. It's like a strong guy, quote, Fred said indifferently. Ronald knew he couldn't talk about his brother and muttered a few words. Slept holding scabbers. It's just that children are always unable to hold the strength. The eyes of the rat were sudden. One can't help but worry about this rat. Dot 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 dot. Dad, why do we wizards spend Christmas? Isn't this a muggle festival? Quote, Braun, 
we never had Christmas for Santa. Rather, it was to commemorate Merlin's birthday. Quote, Merlin's birthday. Braun was a little confused. In his past life Merlin was nothing more than a fictional character. As King Arthur's advisor and magician, he helped King Arthur successfully register the capture of the English peninsula. He was a great king in English mythology and legend. The truth is the myth that King Arthur belonged to the Irish. But the English shamelessly snatched them away after invading Ireland. Closing parenthesis. Foley's tone is respectful. Yes Merlin, a great wizard. His mother was the daughter of a king who knew magic, and his father was either a devil or some kind of evil ghost named Nightmare. Merlin inherited his mother's kindness and his father's magical powers. As a child, he showed his unique talent. But alas, he eventually died. Imprisoned in Oak by a banshee named Vivian. In honor of him. Every year on his birthday, wizards cut Oak in the hope of finding the Oak where he was imprisoned and freeing his soul and allowing him to rest in peace. Of course, with the passage of history, I don't know how muggles miscommunicated. Now the oak has become a pine, and then there is also an eccentric old man with a white beard. This old man will also give gifts to the children. I have to say that this is really stupid. However, I accidentally got the likes of a little wizard like you. Coupled with the large number of muggle-born wizards entering the wizarding world, the festival has continued like this. Similar to the reason Thanksgiving appeared in the wizarding world. Okay son, the time for historical science is over. We got home. Quote, patted Braun on the head. Representative Foley motioned for Braun and his wife to get out of the carriage first. And he himself had to go and bring these rune horses back to the stables. Hungry. Braun, we'll have dinner when your dad comes back. Quote, take off the scarf around your neck. Millie Foley said lovingly to Braun. It's okay mom, I drank a glass of pumpkin juice in Diagon Alley and I'm not very hungry now. Quote, your dad bought it for you. I told him many times. You can't drink too cold in winter. And drinking too much of the spices and pumpkin juice is not good for children. Mr. Foley repeated helplessly, handing the gloves and coat to Dolly, the house elf. You know to buy it back for him. Millie Foley said angrily to her husband with big beautiful eyes. Albert Foley said as if coaxing a child. Okay, okay. My dear Millie won't next time. Quote, Mrs. Foley would not stop. I have to say that the relationship between the two of them is indeed very good. Representative Foley wiped his hands with a warm, damp towel. Dobby, what's today's recipe? The main course was grilled steak. Pair with Yorkshire pudding. The side meal is mashed potatoes with broccoli. Quote, Tana, we prepared borscht and creamy mushroom soup. Which do you like brawn? Borscht. Well, let's get borscht. Serve apple pie for dessert. Quote. Yes, sir. Dobby replied respectfully. It didn't take long. A variety of dishes appear on the table. I have to say. After a month of familiarization. Braun is already very familiar with knives and forks. Under the flying knives and forks. The steak is cut into evenly sized pieces. It is then put in the mouth by Braun. How about a steak? This was sent by your uncle. It is said that what Angus cattle are famous in the muggle world. Quote. Mr. Foley asked while cutting the steak. It's delicious. Braun replied. The surface of the steak is well fried, and the marble lines are faintly visible. It is topped with some cheese as a seasoning, and a circle of bacon is rolled around it. A marbled steak like this is the first time Braun has seen it. In his previous life, he was just a dick who went to work before finishing high school. Where is the money to eat such an expensive steak? It has to be said that although the price of this beef is very expensive. But the taste is really good. It seems to feel a little tired. Brawn from the plate on the table. Bring a Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding, although the name is pudding, is actually more like a type of bread, and the taste is similar to soft bread. Slightly salty, it has the shape of a coffee cup, with a concave and soft middle and crispy outside. Simply put, Yorkshire pudding is a bread baked with proper cooking techniques, which is very delicious and delicious, especially with juicy meats. Braun divides the pudding in half. Pick up half of the steak-stained broth and stuff it into your mouth for a special flavor. Something like Angie White film with bacon. Strange idea. Quote. Braun, how many times have you said that the little wizard who eats more vegetables can grow taller? Quote. Okay mom, but I really don't like broccoli. Reluctantly, 
He stuffed mashed potatoes and broccoli into his mouth. Braun took some effort to shove these things into his mouth that had no taste or even softness when cooked. The thing he hates most is broccoli. It always feels like this food exists to torture humans. As for mashed potatoes, try eating mashed potatoes for a month on end to see what it's like. At first, Braun was surprised. But gradually I became disgusted with these foods. So not only did he not become strong by eating meat all day. On the contrary, he looked a lot thinner. This also made Mrs. Foley a little nerve-wracking. Obviously I used to eat well, why have I become so picky eater now? Okay, okay, if you don't eat it, don't eat it. Try borscht, brawn, quote, Mr. Foley played round, you'll spoil him. A dinner ended with a lot of talk, but Braun was very satisfied with the food. Borscht tastes good, reminds him of the tomato beef soup cooked by the orphanage director. So I drank two large bowls with satisfaction. At the moment, he is sitting on the sofa and touching his stomach with satisfaction. Do you want to start the next simulation when the cooldown is over? A prompt appeared in Braun's eyes. If it weren't for the prompt, he almost forgot that he still had a gold finger. Suppress the excitement in my heart. Braun stood up hurriedly. I'm going to the bedroom to study. After speaking, he ran upstairs. How to study again? Braun take a break. Quote, Mrs. Foley said with some dissatisfaction. After the meal, it would have been a rare parent-child time. But due to this time Braun forgot to eat. Let this parent-child time be forced into a rare world for two. Originally, Mrs. Foley planned to take advantage of the opportunity to tell her lovely son a story. But I didn't expect that this had just finished eating. His own son can't wait to throw himself into the embrace of learning. Chapter 41 Back in the bedroom, Braun can't wait to open his gold finger. Wizard simulator cooldown completed. Open or not? Turn on. Currently you can choose talents, pharmacist, and hybrid. Illustrious life, just and righteous. Please select up to three of the talents listed above for wizard simulation excluding solidification talents. This, this is, looking at the last talent in the talent list in front of you. Braun couldn't help but freeze. Subconsciously took a breath. Kim, golden talent, quote, children of darkness golden, you always have some new ideas for black magic. Whether it's learning or using the dark arts, you'll always be able to enter the realm very quickly without a teacher. At the same time natural dark affinity. Shudder, which allows you to use black magic with less mana and more power. The most powerful dark wizard in history is here. Dark wizard, how could a handsome guy like me be a dark wizard? Quote. Braun muttered, I can't wait to choose. It's golden. Do not select XX. Alas, if you choose, what if you live too long? Will the cooldown be too long? Quote. Then he scratched his head and smiled. What a blissful trouble. But I can't pass up such a good opportunity. Quote, without any hesitation, Braun chose his talent to go up. Then he casually chose the remaining two talents. Prepare to start the simulation. Talent selection completed. The current talents are as follows. Apothecary, blue, as a muggle doctor turned wizard, you have a strong interest in potions. This allows you to learn potions more quickly. Children of Darkness Golden, you always have some new ideas for black magic. Whether it's learning or using the dark arts, you'll always be able to enter the realm very quickly without a teacher. At the same time natural dark affinity. Shudder, which allows you to use black magic with less mana and more power. The most powerful dark wizard in history is here. Illustrious life, red, your life is noble in this life. With power and money that is difficult for ordinary people to achieve. Mixed race blue, your parents come from different species. They will bring some magical powers. Braun took a closer look at the detailed descriptions of these talents. I took a deep breath. What kind of life will it be this time? I wish it wasn't the same as last time. At least, let me learn something powerful. Quote. The experience of the last life was too miserable. Didn't mix anything, and died in a daze. This is also the reason why he chose the talent of eminence. Simulation start. Zero years old, you were born. This time you were born in a royal palace. Your mother was a princess, and your grandfather, although he said that he was a little unhappy with your birth, said nothing. At the age of one, not only can you speak fluently but also know basic words. 
At the age of two, you start reading. This makes your grandfather surprise you and think that you must have a great career in the future, and you often ask your mother who your father is but she always laughs and does not speak. You'll know when the time comes. In the same year, you accidentally fell while playing in the palace. But you weren't hurt but were caught by a black goat. This goat tells you that you will become a great wizard later. You have it in your heart. At the age of three, your mother solemnly brought you to a secluded lake on the day you were three years old. Instead of feeling scared, you feel comfortable. Here you meet your father. A handsome man, but unlike normal people, he has a pair of twisted goat horns. As you know from regular readers, your father was not a human but a demon from hell. Your father is satisfied with the great strength and wise wisdom in your body. He invited many dark creatures of this world to bless you. Vampires give you a long life. The werewolf gave you a strong physique. Dot 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 dot. Finally, your father gave you the power to prophesy your fate. Dot 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 dot. At the age of seven, you followed your father to practice by the lake for four years. Your father tells you that the wheel of fortune has opened your mission. He handed you an oak wand that he said would make your magic more powerful. But it also warns you that you must be careful of oak trees. But when you return to your home country you find that your grandfather's country has disappeared. It turns out that in the three years you left, the country was overrun by enemy countries. Territories are also incorporated into their own country by the other side. And as the royal family of this country, your mother and grandfather were killed by enemy nations. Now you know your mission. Revenge. You follow the guidance of fate to come to Great Britain. You know that here you will get revenge. In the same year, King Wertigan tried to build a tower, but failed. No matter how hard his soldiers worked during the day, at night the tower would be in ruins overnight. So King Wertigan turned to his magician for a way to deal with it. As a result, the magician said that the blood of a child would be added to the lime from which the tower was built, but the child's father must not be human. You heard the news, volunteered to find the king. You explain exactly why the tower collapses every day, because the tower was built on a patch of groundwater. It was also predicted that if the groundwater was drained, two sleeping dragons would be seen in two hollow boulders. And advised the king not to build the tower again. The king was angry at you and locked you up. But no matter how many times it was repaired, it was impossible to build the tower. Ten years old, this year, you were released. Because the king really saw the two dragons you prophesied, they were angry that the king woke them up. So they decided to ruin the king's country. The king panicked and released you to beg for forgiveness and hope that you would find a way to save the country. You accepted the king's apology. And forgave him. You ask the king to prepare a sharp sword and delicious food and various treasures. Put treasures and delicacies in a small cave. And promise to solve this trouble for him. After the king did so. You come to two dragons with your sword. Tell them that the king is willing to offer treasure and food to calm their anger. But only to the most powerful dragon among them. The two dragons argued with each other about who was the most powerful, and after a while, they fought. After three days of fighting, the red dragon defeated the white dragon and killed it. You lead the victorious red dragon to the cave. And tell it that treasures and food are in the cave. The red dragon couldn't wait to get in. After seeing the food, I ate it desperately. But what it doesn't know is that the food has long been poisoned by you. After eating, the dragon fell asleep groggily. You took the opportunity to blind the dragon with your sword. The dragon woke up angry and wanted to flee but could not spread its wings because of the small size of the cave. In this way, after more than ten days of fighting with the dragon, you finally succeeded in killing the dragon. The king was grateful for your bravery and promised you to be the royal magician of the country. At the age of thirty, King Wertigan died, and you became an advisor to his successor, Alirius. Help him solve difficult problems in the country. At the age of 40, in this year Olelius wanted to build a large monument, so you prophesied that you chose a place where the stone was produced in Ireland. It is called the Dance of Giants in Ireland because it is believed that boulders have special properties. But more than 15,000 heavily armed British soldiers armed with ladders and cables could not move the boulder half a step. But you can teleport the stone from Ireland to Britain without much effort. This makes the king trust you more and more. At the age of 50, Alirius, who reigned for 20 years, died, and before his death, 
he made you promise to assist the next generation of new kings. Although you were disgusted with the new king, you did not hesitate under the guidance of fate and immediately agreed. At the age of 55, the new king, King Uther, was a tyrannical and lecherous king. He never paid attention to the government but was more interested in women. King Uther fell in love with a duchess named Igna. Constant harassment courtship, in order to prevent his wife from cheating. Her husband, Gloris, Duke of Cornwall, locked her in a heavily guarded castle. The king came to your residence to ask for help in order to get this woman. Although you were disgusted, you agreed to it for revenge. Because you know that the children born to the king and duchess will help you fulfill your wishes. So you cast a transfiguration curse to make King Uther's appearance exactly like Duke Gloris, and help King Uther get the key to the castle smoothly. Neither the soldiers nor Igna saw the flaw. That night, Duchess Igna became pregnant, and the child in her womb was King Arthur, who would later succeed King Uther to the throne and become King of Britain. To prevent things from being revealed, the king sent the duke into a battlefield and offered no help in the event of an enemy attack. In this way, the duke died in a war, and Igna married King Uther. You become more and more disgusted with this domineering king. Finally, the night after the birth of your prophesied child of destiny, you killed the king and the duchess. At the age of 70, you have protected the growth of this child of fate until he inherits the throne. With your assistance, this king has revived a country that had been in decline because of the previous king. You are no longer the little wizard. It is a national teacher who is revered by the king and worshipped by the people. People don't call you half-demon anymore. You have a new name, Merlin Ambrosius Old English for a mortal seaside fortress. 73 years old, you know that the battle of fate has arrived. You can finally avenge your mother. On the eve of the war you gave King Arthur a sword that you used to slay the dragon. Because killing a dragon is soaked in dragon blood. This sword became very sharp. At the same time, this sword has become extremely powerful after all these years of tempering with magic. You warn King Arthur not to pull the sword out of its scabbard until the last moment. This was difficult to do, because Arthur's opponents were on the verge of victory, but Arthur followed Merlin's advice. It was not until the last moment that the sword was pulled out of its scabbard. When he drew his sword, the light emitted by the Excalibur stung his opponents deeply, overwhelming them. Taking the opportunity, King Arthur used Excalibur to kill the opposing king. Let the opposing army not have the heart to continue fighting. Thus, King Arthur finally triumphed. You have finally completed your own revenge. At the age of 80, you followed King Arthur on his crusade to the west. Victory over many countries. You start to get tired of the war until. At the age of 81, you met a huntress named Vivian. You have never seen such a pure woman. I have to say that she makes your heart move. You plead with King Arthur to let this woman remain in the palace to serve the queen. King Arthur understood your thoughts, and instead of refusing, he was happy that you, who watched him grow up like his father, were able to find someone he liked. During the days you spend with Vivian in the palace, you find yourself completely in love with her. It's as if this woman can get to the bottom of what's going on in your heart. You frantically woo her, but Vivian is unmoved. So he said that he would never be with you unless you taught yourself all the knowledge of life. You fraudulently agreed to Vivian's request without realizing that she had ulterior motives. 84 years old, this year you taught this woman all her own magic. Even their own secrets are told. You are madly in love with this woman. I want to give her everything I have. In the same year, one night, you feel the breath of danger. The prophetic power your father has given you is constantly warning you. You don't hesitate to leave. But you see Vivian at the door, and she invites you to sit in the garden. You hesitate for a moment but ultimately fail to resist the temptation of love. You sit hugging each other by the lake. Kiss each other gently on the lips. But suddenly you sense something is wrong. You find that your magic is gone. And Vivian, who was affectionate just now, was standing not far from him and sneering. In her mouth you learn Vivian's identity. She is the princess of an enemy country who has been seeking revenge after the destruction of the enemy country. And her revenge is you. Then she doesn't hesitate to use the magic you gave her to prepare to seal you. At this moment you have come to your senses. Although you have no magic, you still have the power of the dark monsters. After a fight you kill the woman you love but hate. 
but even though she has been killed by you. But her magic is finally done at the last minute, and you are sealed in an oak tree by the lake. At this moment, you have understood your father's admonition before leaving. You hold your wand and wait quietly for death. At the age of 90, the strong vitality given to you by vampires makes you still alive even if you don't eat. In the same year, because of your departure, King Arthur was defeated in a war. The state is destroyed. 95 years old, living alone. 300 years old, finally, because there is no magic replenishment in the seal, your body can no longer support it. You, dead. The simulator enters the cooling stage, and the simulation time is 300 years. Cooldown time, 300 days. 300 years. I have to say that the simulation time this time is indeed long. The cooling time alone takes a year. It's all worth it, though. With such a golden talent of cowhide, my school life in the next year will definitely not be much worse. It's only the first grade, after all. It's just a philosopher's stone crisis. You don't have to worry about it yourself. Not to mention that it has been so long since I left school. Plenty of time for yourself to practice some powerful dark arts self-defense. And the second is, curing talent, although knowing that talent does not run. But Braun still thinks it's better to solidify earlier. As the talent, child of darkness solidified. Kerr, do you want to replace the, apothecary, talent with the, child of darkness talent? No, at this stage, pharmacist talent I is still very useful to himself. So you can't replace him yet. Otherwise, how can he stand up to his identity as a descendant of the potions family? It's just a pity that this time he couldn't draw a more powerful potions talent than apothecary otherwise he would have replaced it long ago. It's really that today's talent is getting less and less useful. But after all, it is blue talent that cannot be too demanding. Start curing, please wait a moment. Ah. Braun whispered, he felt as if there was something more in him. The flow of magic in the body seems to have become more rapid. But he also felt the gaze of an invisible will. This will does not seem to be conscious, but limited by some kind of rule, and thus sets its sights on itself. Similarly, memories began to appear in his mind. It is Merlin's memory in his own wizard simulator. It's just that these memories seem broken. This is, where Merlin's wand is. How does it feel? Is this place familiar? Quote, the memory finally stopped at Merlin, who was sleeping in the oak tree. It's just that Braun looks a little shocked at the moment. But those were all memories of his past life. Exactly where he doesn't know. It's just that he has a hunch that one day he will find there. And that day will not be too far away. If I can find it, it means that what I'm simulating may not be the middle world of other world but this world. History. Quote. Braun muttered. That is, those things exist. Braun couldn't help but become a little frightened. Originally, he thought that the character in the simulator was called Merlin just by coincidence. But at the moment, he felt that this might not be the case. I don't have the heart to check the power of my talent. Braun jumped out of bed. Run to your own bookshelf. Search carefully. Nothing. How could that be? Quote. Put on your shoes and run downstairs. Hurriedly said. Dad, do we have a book about Merlin at home? Merlin. What do you ask him for? Quote. Mr. Foley was a little confused about his son's thoughts. However, seeing his son's anxious look, he still replied. Of course, it's on the second shelf in the study. The location is not very easy to find you can ask Dom to help you. Quote. Okay, thank you dad. After saying that, Braun hurried to the study. This kid, Representative Foley shook his head and continued to read the newspaper in his hand. Young master. Dom knew what he had to do when Mr. Foley called her name. He had been waiting outside the study for the arrival of his little master, Braun. Braun didn't have the heart to exchange pleasantries with her. Open the study and say, Dom, help me find all the books about Merlin. Okay, young master, as a house elf of Forley Manor. He was in charge of cleaning the entire Foley Manor while also knowing the location of the secret passages in each room. At the same time, I also know the books in the study room very well. Not for long. At Braun's feet was a pile of books about Merlin. Grab one of the oldest books. There are countless accounts of Merlin, the great wizard. Merlin, as King Arthur's advisor, magician, and prophet, is probably the most famous magician of all time. 
he can use his magic to win battles and turn himself into a hunting dog or a stag. He can prophesy, and he can control destiny. Merlin also had outstanding parents. Geoffrey said that his mother was the daughter of a king who knew magic, and that his father was either a demon or some kind of evil ghost called the Dream Demon. There is also a saying that Merlin was born in a dream for Mother Earth and the devil. Satan plans to make Merlin a force for evil on Earth to confront the good power of Jesus Christ. However, immediately after Merlin was born, he was baptized and began his beautiful life, but still retained his prophetic and magical powers. Merlin inherited his mother's kindness and his father's supernatural powers. As a child, he showed his unique talent and saved his life in doing so. Editor's Note This story is written in Muggles, and I think it's interesting to put it in the book, of course, it's just Muggle speculation. Like Satan and Jesus Christ, they are the imagination of the rich imagination of Muggles. Closing parenthesis. Bronze eyes swept over the narratives, and the more he looked at them, the more terrifying he felt. The Red Dragon and the White Dragon. The movement of the prehistoric giant column. King Uther. Arthur. Vivian. Bronn couldn't help but drop the book on the floor in surprise. The pages turn and finally stay on the last page. But the great magician still made a stupid mistake. He has a crush on a witch named Vivian, sometimes called the Daughter of the Lake, and tells Vivian the secret of her magical powers. Vivian, who learned of Merlin's weaknesses, cast a spell on him and imprisoned him forever in an oak tree. Really, is it an oak tree? Quote, Braun muttered. So, other books that, could there be something different? Quote, Braun couldn't help but start flipping through other books. History of the Kings of Britain. Exploring the greatest wizard of all time, Merlin. The Origin of Magic, The Wizard Merlin, dot 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 dot. All the stories are the same. So what I experienced in the simulator is true. Quote. After the horror, Braun couldn't help but start to get a little excited. It's happened in the past. It's all over anyway. Those people would have died a long time ago. Doesn't even a wizard as powerful as Merlin burp the same. But if true, it means that Merlin's wand must still be in an oak tree in England at the moment. Merlin's magic he couldn't count on. Because all of them are blessed by the creatures of darkness. Even if he has a memory, it is still useless without blessings. It is difficult for a smart woman to cook without rice. But that wand is a good thing. Braun felt that at least Merlin's wand would be no worse than the elder wand. After all, one is a nightmare demon, and the other is a death treasure. Even if it is not as good, it will not be much different. And, more loyalty. Otherwise, he would not have been buried deep in the oak tree with Merlin. How, found what you want to know isn't there. Quote. I don't know when Mr. Foley has appeared outside the study. Leaning against the door frame, he was looking at his contemplative son with interest. Of course dad, I know, the books in the study helped me a lot. Quote. With a wave of his wand, Mr. Foley puts Braun's messed up book back in its original position. How did you get up to find Merlin? Nothing, I ate a Merlin card when Ronald was eating chocolate frog with me today so I was a little curious. Braun quietly pulled a chocolate frog card out of his pocket. This card is indeed what he ate today. He didn't care much at the time and put it in his pocket. But thinking about it at the moment, it's really too much of a coincidence. Looking at Merlin, who disappeared without a trace after blinking with himself on the card, Braun couldn't help but ponder. Thoughts to myself. Are these simulations triggerable? But what are the conditions? Quote, but Mr. Foley is not suspicious. After nodding, he agreed with Braun's words. He could see that Braun had something else he didn't know about. But he didn't ask much. It is good that children begin to have their own little secrets. This shows that the child has grown up and has his own careful thinking. At this time, mutual respect is the best choice. When he is willing, he will naturally tell himself. Since you're done reading the book, let's wash up early and rest. You've been crazy for a day today. Get up early tomorrow and we're going to your uncle's house. Quote. Got it, I'll go to sleep. In normal times, Braun might ask what uncle it was. But at this moment, he had long been smashed by one news after another. At this moment, I have long been in the mood to ask something more. Say goodbye to your father. Braun ran to the bedroom and washed up skillfully change into pajamas. Lie down on the soft and comfortable bed in your bedroom. Who are you? Who are you? 
Who are you? Who are you? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Braun, who was lying asleep on the bed, suddenly woke up. After turning his head to look around, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief after finding that he was still at home. In his sleep, he dreamed that he had come to a dark space, in which he could feel a pair of huge eyes staring at him. Braun's boundless loneliness and despair made Braun feel and wake up. What simulator is that? Are you there? What's going on? Quote. Originally, Braun just whined casually and asked two sentences. I didn't expect my own water to answer than Goldfinger. But who knows that Goldfinger, who has not moved much, spoke up this time. The specific reason for the host's dream is because the solidified talent is too high. So the host is affected by talent. This effect will gradually be adapted by the host's body and disappear as the host's growth magic increases. Sure enough, nothing comes without a price. The reason why the alchemist talent did not affect me last time was because the quality of the talent was relatively low. But this time it is different, this is a golden talent, it is not surprising that it has an impact. And listening to this system, this influence should slowly disappear. Then don't worry too much. Left and right are just nightmares for a while. He endured. Quote. After thinking through this, Braun didn't worry much. Then he asked. So, how long will it take? Feed. Feed. Speak. Dog system. Quote. Braun scolded helplessly. But I don't want to say this system, and I can't do anything about it. Slow down. Isn't it a nightmare? He can carry it. It's not a latch monster that grows all day long and gnaws on Avada's melons. He can bear this small price. Because of the nightmare, Braun has long been out of sleep at the moment. After washing up, put on the clothes that Dom had placed next to his pillow. Then I walked out of the bedroom. It's still early for Braun to come out today. The portraits that used to whisper are now sleeping soundly. Through the castle's windows, Braun could see the still dim sky and falling snowflakes. Looking at this situation, this snow can't stop today. But that's normal. If it doesn't snow on Christmas Eve, can it still be considered Christmas Eve? The living room is a little dark because there is no light. Only the fireplace still emits fire. Let the living room be reflected red. The flames burn the wood, crackling from time to time. It makes the already silent castle seem quieter and quieter. Dom, with bronze soft call, the house elf Dom appeared in front of him. What's the matter, little master? At the moment, it is still holding a barrel of oak barrel wine in front of him. It looks like he should be preparing to feed the rune horse. But after hearing Bronze's voice, he hurriedly moved to appear in the castle. I forgot to put down even what I had at hand. Bring me a cup of hot tea to the study. After saying that, I will ignore it. Push open the door of the study. The originally dim study room also lit up at this moment. And on the table in the study is a steaming cup of black tea. And Dom also got a new curtain at the moment. The smell of horse manure on his body also disappeared. Dom brought the standard spell elementary. Braun sipping the fragrant black tea and instructed Dom over and over again. The reason why Dom brought the standard spell was because he wanted to see if his golden talent had an increase in magic other than black magic. Braun's tea wasn't finished yet. A brown book with a brass buckle on it was taken by Dom. Opening the book, spells appeared in front of Braun one by one. Fire spell, cutting spell, floating spell, locking spell. See these spells. Braun had a hunch in his heart that he could cast these spells even without needing a wand. There was no hesitation. Braun tried it. Yugadim Leviosa. With the spell spit out, Braun only felt a magical force surging around him. But because there is no guidance from a magic wand, this magic power does not know where to vent, so. Bang. Braun floated into midair. Then he was thrown heavily to the ground. Shish. Clutching the leather drum, Braun couldn't help but gasp. Young master, are you all right? Dom nervously stepped forward to check. No, it's fine. Helped by Dom to sit on a chair. The results of the experiment proved that the golden talent is worthy of the golden talent. It's also easier to cast other types of magic. At least when he tried the floating charm before. But there was no reaction at all. Although he said that he was not lightly dropped, it was not because his talent was not strong but that he was really a bit of scum. Another point is that because I don't have a wand, I don't know how to channel the magic after reciting the spell. As a result, the spell acted directly on his body. 
Looks like we're going to get the wand as soon as possible. Otherwise, even if you know the spell, you won't be able to practice it. Quote. Braun thought to himself. As for silent spell casting, he didn't think about it. But that's something you learn in sixth grade. My own gold finger is not the kind of direct opening and hanging, dark blue plus dots. Then push all the way across. Kick Dumbledore and punch Voldemort. It's about giving yourself a gift. You can only give yourself a small boost, such as learning faster. Things like more ability to cast spells. Although it helps, it is up to you in the end to return it. Braun, on the other hand, is fairly self-aware. He knew he wasn't a genius. So it's better to study step by step and honestly. You can't go wrong with that, and you won't be calculated by Dumbledore's old B because it's too long. Thinking of this, Braun's face couldn't help but change. Brain closure. It occurred to him that Dumbledore would be deceived. If the identity of his crosser is discovered, Braun couldn't help but shiver. However, there is still time. It will be more than half a year before the notification will be received. After that, I have to wait at home for two months before school starts, and I still have time to study. Quote, the difficulty of brain closure is that there is no one to teach and how to learn is rarely known. But how difficult is it to say? Actually, no. Like Malfoy, he learned it in a few months under Bellatrix's tutelage. Thus, it's not that hard magic. The only difficulty is the need for a qualified teacher to teach. As for Harry, who took nearly two years to learn to Dementor. That's a special case. So now his top priority is to learn asterisk asterisk brain closure. Dom, help me find a book about brain closure in my study. Dom agreed. Then he used the floating charm to control a heavy book and put it on the table with difficulty. Then turn it to the page Braun needs. Just this one. Yes, Master Braun. Other books on brain occlusion are kept in a separate study. Those are some evil bad magic. Dom couldn't bring the little young master over. Quote. Braun frowned and nodded. There are not too many surprises. Brain occlusion has a narrow range of applications and can only resist brain invasion. Or rather, it was specially set up for the dark magic Dementor. As for anything else, it would be easier to break free from the imperious curse. Just the incidental effect. Therefore, brain closure is mostly recorded together with Dementoring. And the Dementoring is mostly recorded in the books of black magic. Therefore, although the brain closure is not a forbidden operation, it is also difficult to find. And I was young and thought about those dangerous dark magic books. Mr. Foley certainly won't allow himself to watch it. It is not easy to find such a book to read among these ordinary books in the study. Brain occlusion is a magical art that resists the penetration of external spirits, it can close the brain to resist the invasion and influence of magic, and the opposite magic is dementoring. People who are proficient in brain closure are called brain closure masters. After taking a sip of tea, Braun looked at it. Behind the text is a vivid illustration. I saw that the content of the illustration was a human head. A shield is drawn on the outside of the head. Looking at the illustration, Braun couldn't help but mutter. It's quite graphic. Cerebral occlusion is a prerequisite for defeating the Dementor's ability to detect polygraphs, using suspicious practices such as avoiding face-to-face -face or eye contact. Similarly, Dementors can only peer into the other person's heart based on their answers. For some of the secrets in the heart of the spelled person, it is generally difficult to steal the Dementor. Basic brain occlusion involves clearing the mind of thoughts and emotions so that the mind seeker cannot find any emotional connections related to memories that the lie detector intends to mask. Simple resistance to the Dementor attack requires a skill similar to fighting the Imperious Curse. In more advanced forms, cerebral occlusion allows its user to suppress only certain feelings and memories. These feelings and memories are the opposite of what the user of the brain occlusion technique wants the mind seeker to believe, thus allowing the brain occlusion master to lie without exposing himself. Quote. That is to say, the primary brain sealing technique is to strengthen one's resistance to dementoring, and to know that the direction is applied to oneself. Braun originally thought that as long as he practiced brain closure, he would be able to hide his memory. I didn't expect that I had to wait until I was proficient. It's a bit troublesome, but it's good to be able to practice to the basics. At least be wary of Dumbledore's dementoring. As long as I find out his small movements, I think he will not forcibly pry into my thoughts when the time comes. Quote. 
Dumbledore is also a white witch anyway, and it is certainly impossible to dementor others without the other party knowing like Voldemort. He has many concerns. This is also the reason why Blacken is three times stronger and three points weaker. For justice always sacrifices more than evil. Otherwise, Malfoy and the others in the original book would not have the ability to unite with the school board to decide to remove Dumbledore. Although it failed, but it can also be seen from this. Malfoy and the others were afraid of Dumbledore but also had limited fear. Because they knew that since Dumbledore chose order, he needed to follow the rules. Let me see how to cast the spell again. To perform brain occlusion, the mind must be cleared of thoughts and emotions, the mind remains blank and calm. After the mind is stabilized, the spellcaster can use the method of disarming the weapon, trying to defend himself, casting a spell on the opponent, etc. to repel the dementor. Finally, how to perform brain closure is also asking you to find a real master, only through practice can you learn the subtleties. Braun, who saw the last sentence, almost tore the book. The co-author said so much, it's all nonsense. In the end, I still have to find a teacher to teach myself to practice. Originally, his plan was to find a way to practice first and try it himself. If it doesn't work, find another teacher. But look at the meaning in the book. It may be impractical to practice this brain closure technique on your own. I'd better honestly let Mr. Foley find a teacher for himself. However, not all useful information was obtained. At the very least, knowing that the brain sealing technique does not use a wand, which is good news for him without a wand. Braun, can't sleep because you're going to your uncle's house. Mr. Foley teased in his pajamas. Dad, Braun put down his book and shouted, then replied. I'm not too sleepy, so I get up early and get ready to read a book. Alas, it's good to love learning, but don't forget to rest Braun either. Mr. Foley touched Braun's head with some distress. Only when Braun is too late for the magic riot and wants to make up for the lost time. That's why I study so hard. While feeling distressed, I couldn't help but feel a little distressed. Let's go, don't look at it and it's time to go to dinner. After saying Mr. Foley, and went out. At the dining table, Braun is sitting at the table waiting for breakfast. Rub your stomach from time to time. Perhaps it was because he woke up too early today, and by this time Braun was already a little hungry. But breakfast wasn't ready yet, so he can only drink some black tea to satisfy his hunger. Mom, Millie fully smiled at Braun. It's so early, Braun. If you're hungry, we'll eat when your dad finishes washing. Quote. As soon as the words fell, I heard Mr. Foley's exclamation voice from far and near. Oh, oh, my God, check it out, Millie. Braun is in the newspaper. Quote. Mr. Foley waves the daily profit in his hand with excitement. Millie, who originally wanted to reprimand her husband for not yelling in the morning, also poked her head over in surprise at this moment. Where, where is my baby? Quote, this, look at that, here's how Braun won yesterday's quiz on wizarding in the quiz at the Quidditch boutique. It's amazing, worthy of being my son. Quote, Mr. Foley said triumphantly, Millie Foley Foley also saw it at the moment. The location is not large, occupying only a small piece of the newspaper if not a picture of Braun. It doesn't attract attention at all. But even such a small news still surprised the husband and wife. It's just that the name of this news is not good. What is a genius or a fool? Our son is a genius. Quote. Mrs. Foley nodded the headline of the newspaper with some dissatisfaction. No way, the headlines of the Daily Prophet have always been so exaggerated. Especially that Rita Sky. Mrs. Foley hurriedly waved her hand. Don't mention her, that toad makes me sick. I'm going to eat that. Quote, the tone was full of disgust. Okay, okay, then eat. Quote, after Mr. Foley whispered a few words to Dolly beside him, he sat down at the table and waited. He knew the reason for his wife's dislike of Rita Skye. It's all because of some news written by that woman when Millie married her. Exaggerating the words of the two of them on the news is just a matter of misinterpreting them. This made his wife secretly hate. Of course, at that time, his father was still starting some relationships and teaching this guy who liked to fabricate right and wrong. Afterwards, the woman also came to the door to apologize and was demoted, and it was only in the past few years that she slowly became active in the Daily Prophet again. Breakfast was lighter today. Dolly first laid out the cutlery. 
Then he waved his fingers and directed the soybeans and croissants to fly to the plates of the masters. After pouring a cup of salon black tea for the two hosts, poured another glass of milk for his little master. Then he stood quietly behind the three people. Wait for them to eat. If it weren't for that strange look and the curtains on your body. Said he was a highly trained butler. Someone is sure to believe it. After breakfast, the Foley family rested for a while. And you're ready to go. Braun wanted to go to the garden but was stopped by Mr. Foley. Braun, no carriage today. We used the portkey. Too conspicuous in a carriage would attract the attention of muggles. And it's Christmas Eve. Diagon Alley closes very early and we may have to come back late today with nowhere to park. Quote. Dad, why don't you use the phantom transfer? Braun asked curiously. How do you say that? Phantom transition doesn't feel very good for a little wizard like you. Quote. And it is said to be harmful to the little wizard. Millie Foley said nervously. Mr. Foley said helplessly. I said Millie, that's fake. I went to inquire. Just feeling dizzy and uncomfortable will not have any other effect. Quote. It was written in which weekly. Mrs. Foley said to her husband a little unconvinced. Mr. Foley was a smart choice not to argue with his wife. Come on, Braun grabbed this. Mr. Foley took out a fine cane. Three people holding hands. Ready, Braun. Quote. Mr. Foley's voice just fell. Braun felt as if a hook was hooking him behind his belly button. Then hook yourself forward with irresistible momentum. Then Braun felt his feet off the ground, as if flying. Like a gust of wind galloping through the air. I can't see anything clearly in front of me. The fingers holding the portkey were also firmly glued to the cane. But he could clearly feel the sound of the wind, the sound of people talking and frolicking in his ears. And the sound of blood flowing in your own veins. It seems like a long time has passed, or maybe it's just a moment. After stumbling a few steps, Braun opened his eyes. I found myself standing in the lounge of a train station. Perhaps the Foley family came too early. There were no people inside the station. So their appearance did not attract the attention of the muggles. Maybe it's because of a squib brother. Mr. Foley still knows a lot about muggle stuff. Not only the suit and hat on his body, but also his behavior were no different from muggles. Don't make some strange moves, put on a look of curiosity about everything. Let's go, your uncle should be waiting for us outside. A family of three walked towards the outside of the station. Pure blood etiquette is not trained for nothing. Plus this valuable handmade suit. Let the three of them attract respectful glances from some people from time to time. Mr. Foley also nodded generously at them. It was as if a nobleman was patrolling his own people. Outside the station, a middle-aged man who resembled Mr. Foley was standing outside the car waiting quietly. His wife and daughter stood beside the man. The girl's age and brawn should be younger. At the moment, I am playing with a haw. Dad, who are we waiting for? Why come so early? And why don't we get into the car and wait for that? It's so cold outside, quote, he said and stomped his foot. Wait a little longer baby, we're waiting for your eldest uncle and cousin. Mrs. Mason, who was standing aside, comforted. She knew better than her daughter who she was waiting for. So there is no feeling of impatience. She is like her husband. Also a squib. It's just that she is not as lucky as her husband. From time to time, Family members in the wizarding world can get in touch. She was secretly given away by her family after testing her talent at the age of three. The family never contacted her again. Living in Muggle society too early had made her forget almost everything in the wizarding world. Although he lived well in a Muggle family arranged by his family, he had no clue about Muggle knowledge. It wasn't until the death of her Muggle parents that her life became difficult because only compulsory education is available, so she can only work in low-end jobs. But from time to time, strange behavior made her unable to work long in every job. Not even friends. It wasn't until she was in her twenties that the wizarding world approached her again to marry another squib. Her troubled life is over. And that squib is his husband. Abel, long time no see. And Joanna, you're a lot fatter than when you first married Abel. Quote, Mrs. Foley patted her husband angrily. Joanna was not angry but said enthusiastically. Albert, Millie, it's been a long time coming. This is Braun, Pauline, this is your cousin Braun. Quote, cousin Braun, 
Although the little girl felt a little shy when she saw the stranger, she still shouted obediently. I didn't expect Pauline to grow so big. We haven't seen each other for a long time, and the last time was not long after Braun was born. Quote. Yes, saying that, Joanna looked at the still young Millie with some envy. She and Millie are about the same age. But he is starting to have wrinkles and the other party is still as young as ever. This is because of the magic power. While magic brings wizards a variety of magical abilities, it also constantly changes their bodies to make them have a longer life. By the way, don't say it, get in the car. It's too cold outside. Quote. Joanna greeted the Foley's. Everyone did not delay. Sitting together in this luxurious Rolls Royce Silver Angel. And then leave under the envious gaze of pedestrians. Got into the car. Mr. Foley is finally beginning to reveal his true nature. While twisting my body, I became curious about the furnishings in the car. Abel, this muggle car is so comfortable. Much better than your last car, not so bumpy. It's just a little smaller. I think you should try letting me cast a traceless stretch spell on you. Quote. Abel looked at his brother angrily. Albert, I've said this many times it's called a car. Don't call it a muggle car, and don't cast magic on my car. Otherwise, I'm going to hit you in the nose like I did when I was a child. Quote. Mr. Foley subconsciously touched his nose, and then said with shame. You're still as boring as ever. The two brothers looked at each other and couldn't help but laugh. The strangeness that I hadn't seen for a long time was also diluted with laughter. Mom, Dad and this uncle are so strange. Pauline whispered in Joanna's arms. Shish, Mom will explain it to you later. Now don't disturb your dad and uncle's chat. Quote. The little girl nodded as if she didn't understand. Braun sat in the car and calmly looked at the scenery outside. It was the first time in his life that he had been to London. To be honest, it wasn't as good as he thought. Maybe it's because of the snow, but the air isn't too bad. But it still smells of dust. The sucking into his throat even made him feel some pain. The car soon drove to a rather luxurious and wealthy area. In this street, every house is a single-family villa. It seems to be because it is too early at this moment. Everyone is either eating breakfast or not getting up yet. People who used to walk their dogs for morning jogging also stopped because of heavy snowfall. However, despite the desertion, you can still see the festive atmosphere. The car slowly stopped in front of a villa. The villa is not particularly luxurious. The skin of the facade is even modeled by rainwater erosion. But even so, being able to own a villa in this small part of the city of London shows how rich Braun's uncle really is. Come on in Braun. It's too cold outside to warm up inside the house. Quote. Joanna shouted as she saw Braun standing outside and smiled. Yes, Aunt Joanna. Mom, there's something strange about cousin Braun too. Pauline whispered. Your cousin just hasn't seen a house like this, so it's a little curious. Joanna touched her daughter's head and said fondly. She thought it was Braun's first time seeing muggle architecture and she was stunned. Pauline couldn't help but say with a little pride. Our house is the biggest. The students in our class are not as big as our house. Quote. Abel, there is a heart. Albert couldn't help but sigh as he looked at the room exactly like when he came here before. There are not many things in the house, a desk and a bed. And it looks like it's a little old. But even so, these things don't look stale. On the contrary, it looks as smooth as new. At first glance, people often come here to clean. I didn't. I just didn't want the house to be too dirty so I stopped by someone to clean it. Quote. Abel said not salty or faint. But there is some happiness under the eyes. Albert Foley also did not debunk his brother. Just slowly wander around the bedroom, touch this and see that from time to time sigh a few times. Almost an hour passed. Everyone sat down at the table and started making small talk. Abel. You wrote to me some time ago saying that there was something important and you had to ask me to come over. Can it be said now? Quote. Mr. Foley asked after taking a sip of tea. Abel didn't speak, but pulled her daughter over. I want you to check my daughter's talent. Albert raised his eyebrow. Instead, he asked, why not wait for the letter from Hogwarts? I think according to Pauline's age, if she has talent, she should send a letter the year after tomorrow. Also, did Pauline magic riot? Quote, I don't know. Mr. Abel said with some distress. 
Although he is said to be able to use magical items as a squib, he cannot observe the talents of a young wizard like a real wizard. Glanced at his somewhat lost brother, Mr. Foley sighed. Let me help you see if her magic is enough to enroll. Pauline was a little puzzled by the words of her father and uncle. What magic or something? Is it acting out a drama story? Pauline, come to the uncle. Albert said with a kind smile. Pauline hesitated and resisted Mr. Foley, a strange relative. However, after hearing his father's words, he obediently walked to Albert. Albert chanted a string of incantations from his mouth. Then he put his palm on Pauline's head. It didn't take long to take it down again. And at this moment, Pauline's eyes widened, looking at Mr. Foley with some disbelief. Even rubbing his eyes, suspecting that he was wrong from time to time. It's really Mr. Foley's scene just now that is too amazing. I saw that after he chanted the spell, bursts of milky white light began to emerge from his hand. When this big hand pressed on Pauline's head, the white light began to change in various ways. It's good looking. But when she looked again, the light seemed to disappear again. What she saw just now was nothing but her hallucinations. How? Abel asked nervously. Mr. Foley sighed. This disappointed Abel a little and seemed to know the result. But before his wife could comfort him, Mr. Foley grinned. Congratulations, Amber. Although Polly's magic power is not too high, there is no doubt that she has had an unconscious magic riot. And be able to be accepted to Hogwarts. Quote, really, really. There was a tremor in Abel's tone. Not being able to become a wizard was the pain of his life. And he didn't want his daughter to be like him, a muggle or a squib. It seems that you can live carefree but do not know the truth of the world. Of course, my detection. Oh, quote, before he could finish speaking, he was punched in the nose. Shet, Amber, you actually hit me. Quote, Mr. Foley covered his nose, as if reminiscing about his childhood, though it wasn't too wonderful. Who let you lie to me? I thought you would mature a little after having a child, but I didn't expect it to be as bad as before. Quote, ah, I'm kidding you. You dare to beat your brother to see how I teach you a lesson. Quote, while saying a change, he punched Abel. It made Abel's originally triumphant expression instantly become painful. There are also more dark eyes on his face. Albert, you still love sneak attacks as much as ever. Look I don't teach you a lesson. Quote, quote dot 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 quote. Albert, who was sitting at the table, said with some uneasiness. Mom, don't you pull dad and Uncle Abel apart. Glanced at the two brothers on the ground. Millie Foley said without any concern. It's okay son, your father and your Uncle Abel will stop when they have fun. This is the brother's unique way of communicating emotionally. Quote. Albert didn't believe his mother's words, but he looked at Aunt Joanna, who was calmly drinking black tea across from him. I can't help but think, maybe, did I really misunderstand, quote, dot 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 dot, in front of the table. Mr. Foley has a dark blue eye on his face. The nose is also blocked with toilet paper. It looks very miserable. Of course, Abel is not much better. A pair of panda eyes at the same time the hair was pulled down. From time to time, he grinned and gasped. But even so, the two kept mixing their mouths. Joanna and Millie are preparing lunch in the kitchen. Cousin Braun, that one just now, that's magic. Braun said to his cousin. Since she has a talent for magic, it doesn't hurt to tell her these secrets. Anyway, she will have to know sooner or later, there will be no impact. Really, really magic? Pauline asked with wide eyes. Can you show me then? After speaking, he looked at Braun. I'm sorry Pauline, I don't know magic yet, I'm too young. But I might be able to show you when I go to school next year. Quote. Oh, Pauline replied with some disappointment. But soon he started grabbing Braun again and asking. You can see that she is interested in these novelties. Braun, on the other hand, is a little distressed by this newly acquainted cousin. But it's hard to refuse. I had to take the trouble to tell her about those wizarding worlds. From time to time, she exclaimed, Braun, come and help mom serve the dishes. Quote, okay mom, I'm here. Mrs. Foley's words made Braun finally breathe a sigh of relief. After agreeing, he ran impatiently to the kitchen. At this moment, Braun finally understood the distress of those young parents with babies. It's really a child's mind that is too fanciful. 
She always comes up with something weird to ask you. So that you can't answer. Lunch is not so luxurious. Just some simple sandwiches and some bacon. After lunch. Adults should talk about things, prepare Christmas dinner. Braun, on the other hand, was dragged outside by his cousin. The snow at the moment is not as heavy as in the morning. It's just floating thinly. Set the mood for the arrival of this festival. Wander the streets and watch your cousin greet the neighbors around you from time to time. It can be seen that his uncle's family has a good relationship in this area and the neighbors around it. Pauline, who is he? A little fat man with his two little henchmen looked at Braun with some hostility. Pauline, who was holding Braun's arm, frowned. Dolly, I said it a long time ago. I do not like you. Don't keep pestering me, quote, Dolly. Braun looked at the little fat man in front of him with a somewhat surprised expression. Isn't this the cousin of the protagonist Harry Potter? How is it here? This is not Privet Road. Is it because of this little white face? Dolly pointed at Braun with some anger, only feeling his head green. Ever since his father had brought him to Mason's house to see Pauline, he had a crush on the little girl. At this moment, seeing Pauline holding a boy's arm only felt like her heart was pierced by a knife. I can't wait to use the boxing cover I just bought to open this little white face. Brother D, it must be this little white face who robbed his sister-in-law. Hit him, quote. Dolly's other dogleg also nodded. That's right, Brother D gave him a look. Let him taste the power of your new boxing cover. Quote. Look at the silly trio in front of you. Braun couldn't help but tease. Before Pauline could speak, she deliberately asked. Cousin, who is this person? How do you look dumb and silly? Quote. Pauline didn't understand Braun's eyes and was a little stunned. On the other side, Dolly reacted. You, what did you call her? Cousin, what's wrong? Quote. Ah, yes, you're not, you're not. Isn't it? By the way, what do you mean by calling me little white face just now? Listen to your meaning and still hit me. I said Pauline, can't you play with such a bad boy? Quote. Pauline also reacted sweetly at this moment. Got it cousin. But Dolly was a little panicked. I thought it was a little white face, but I didn't expect it to be a big uncle. As soon as he came up, he said that he was going to hit someone. At this moment, Dolly was a little panicked and didn't know what to say. I had to squeeze out a smile and said, Take what, cousin, my name is Dolly, and it's good if you call me Shaoli. I mean, Dolly looked around a little anxiously. I couldn't help but see the fist cover in my hand. This is what he begged his parents to buy for a long time. But for their own happiness. One gritted teeth. I mean, do you think my new fists look good? Not bad, very good looking. But don't change the subject. What do you mean by my little white face just now? Quote. That, that, I mean you have good skin. That's right, I can't talk when you say you have good skin, don't mind. Quote. Braun pretended to say again. Then your friend said to give me something powerful with your new boxing cover. He said nonsense. He doesn't have a bright mind. It means giving you a fist. Quote. Dogleg number two wanted to refute but was glared at by Dolly, or said with a frown. That's right, I was knocked on the head when I was a child, and my brain was not bright. So, I'll take the fist cover. Braun asked with a smile. You take it, don't worry. It's my honor to see it. Quote. Dolly slapped his chest and shook the sky. Okay, thank you then. See you next time. Quote. Braun unceremoniously took Dolly's fist cover. Then took Pauline away. You walk slowly, you walk slowly. Dolly looked at Braun's back and dog-legged Dow. But when he couldn't see Braun, his fat face couldn't help but collapse. It's distressing. It hurts so much that you can't breathe. Brother D, why are we going now? Dogleg one asked cautiously. Dolly's fat eyes widened. Why else can you go home? Blame you for instigating me to come here. Now my fists are gone. Quote, saying that, he gave his little brother two punches as if he was still angry, and hit them with grinning. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.